Well, guys, this is something I've known about for a while now. Reports have been floating around on these contracts, but the media has done their best to ignore the obvious that this government is likely corrupt. Their spending this year has shown it beyond any doubt at this point for most people. Hundreds of billions wasted on policies that make no sense and mostly spent with companies owned by their friends. There was no tender process or competition allowed. They just paid the overpriced figures quoted without question and have continued to do so. New contracts are likely given out all the time, but we don't hear about the ins and outs of them until after the fact, if we ever do. But today it seems the BBC have actually done their job by calling out the government for what some would consider out-and-out -out corruption, or at the very least, gross negligence with public funds. You know, the sort of gross negligence that pays a go-between or gopher $28 million for sorting out some PPE when the media claimed we had none in the country, which I actually debunked in a video at the time because the UK had over 2.7 billion items of PPE in stock ready and waiting. In. The media bleating on about it though obviously allowed the government to justify spending any amount on PPE or anything they wanted and that is exactly what they have done. Take Serco for instance, billions sent to them likely because former Tory MP and Brexit traitor Sir Nicholas Soames brother is the CEO. £40 billion test and trace scam went to them which they have cocked up and is a pointless idea anyway. But they also have £12 billion contracts to house the illegal immigrants the Tories are importing daily using the border farce. Of course, that Serco contract is not something the BBC will report on too often if they ever do, much like the grooming gang scandal. The only reason we have them saying anything now is because the National Audit Office has found firms recommended by MPs, peers and ministerial offices have been given priority this year, which I bet happens every year but not on this biblical scale. Now, the National Audit Office showed its weakness in this situation because despite strong words, they also made excuses for the government and has essentially let them get away with it. So, so let's go through the BBC article on it and see what it has to say. It headlines, Watchdog urges government to come clean over deals, and that is literally about as strong as it gets when it comes to telling the government to come clean with their dodgy shit. The National Audit Office found firms recommended by MPs, peers and ministers' offices were given priority. It said there was inadequate explanation of key decisions such as why particular suppliers were chosen, nor was enough done to address potential conflicts of interest, which seems to be a common theme when it comes to this situation now. Take Sir Patrick Valance and his £600,000 worth of shares in GSK. Meg Hillier, Chairwoman of the Commons Public Accounts Committee, called for ministers to come clean and publish all information about the contracts awarded. The government acknowledged it had procured services with extreme urgency due to the crisis, but it said it had robust processes in place. That's their way of saying we gave it to our friends, but we're going to use the excuse that it was an emergency so we can get away with it. If you think that's anything different, then I'm sorry Sorry to say, you're a complete fucking idiot. According to the NOA's report, more than 8,600 coronavirus contracts had been awarded by 31st of July, ranging in value from less than £100 to £410 million. Of these, £10.5 billion worth were awarded directly without a competitive tender process, the report said, which I don't care if there is an emergency, it should be against the fucking law. This is not their money, it's our money at the end of the day. They shouldn't be able to willy-nilly spend it how they please especially not with their fucking friends. As a matter of fact, if you are friends or business associates of an MP, it should discount your company from being able to take government contracts. That is how you stop cronyism and corruption, if you ask me. Personal protective equipment accounted for 80% of the number of contracts awarded. The report comes after the BBC revealed on Tuesday that a Spanish businessman who acted as a go-between to secure protective garments for the NHS in the pandemic was paid $28 million in UK taxpayers' cash so completely taking the piss on what I said during my introduction. The consultant Michael Sager had been in line for a further $20 million of UK public funds, documents filed in a US court reveal. The legal papers revealed the American supplier of the PPE called the deals lucrative. Yeah, I'm not fucking surprised when the go-between's making himself £28 million on these deals. I wonder how much the actual contract was worth. Because to be getting £28 million kickbacks, I'm sure it's got to be worth at least billions. The next it says tip of the iceberg, NAO head Gareth Davies said it remained essential that decisions are properly documented and made transparent if government is to maintain public trust. Miss Hillier, a Labour MP, said the failings uncovered may be the tip of the iceberg. The government overlooked a serious conflict of interest, paid consultants for months before giving them contracts and purchased masks it knew weren't up to scratch. Which if you worked for a private company and were caught doing that, you would literally lose your job quicker than you could say, shit weasel. But being these are part of the 
government, it doesn't really matter. They can do whatever they want and cock it up as many times as they like. We have seen that with all of these fucking ministers that are still in jobs despite the amount of times they've been caught lying or ballsing things up. It's bad enough that it's set up a high priority lane to fast track companies with the right connections. But the failure to track how half the companies had ended up on it made it impossible to ensure proper safeguards were in place. Now if you ask me, that seems like complete and utter corruption, but I could be wrong. How the fuck can this be allowed to continue? Oh yeah, the whole system is actually helping the government do this shit. We have here declared interest. The NAO looked in detail at 20 contracts including a deal with research firm Public First whose owners had previously advised or worked with cabinet minister Michael Gove. Artificial intelligence company Faculty which was awarded contracts worth almost 3 million. Cabinet office minister Lord Agnew owned a 90 grand stake in the firm but has since relinquished it. And we already know about the countless masks that are fucked up, I'm not reading through them. Iander Capital and Pestfix, a pest control company, are the ones who cock that up. Which should send alarm bells ringing when a pest control company is selling you 600,000 masks for 350 million pounds. Fuck me, that is a lot of money for 600,000 masks. These things are being sold at pennies apiece now. How the fuck can they justify that sort of money? The NOA concluded that in cases of potential conflicts of interest involving ministers, all had properly declared their interests and it found no evidence of their involvement in procurement decisions or contract management. The spending watchdog acknowledged the pandemic required acting with extreme emergency and the public contracts regulation allowed an emergency response, including awarding deals directly without a formal competition. In other words, given the government a free pass to get away with this bollocks. Cabinet Office Minister Julia Lopez said we have been dealing with an unprecedented global pandemic that has posed the biggest challenge to the UK in a generation. I have to say that is a load of bollocks. This government has posed the biggest challenge to the UK in a generation by fucking us all over. As this report rightly recognises, you know what, I'm not even reading their bullshit, they're just trying to make excuses for it. We all know they're talking a load of shit. They gave their friends these contracts because they wanted to. They could have went elsewhere, they chose not to and have sought it out their friends. Hopefully we get some public inquiries that will literally call these cunts out for it. Though I wouldn't hold your breath on that. Corruption runs deep in this country. We might as well be a tin pot African fucking nation when it comes down to it. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. 